All right. Um, I didn't set my microphone up. This is going to be kind of quick. And um, so there may be a lot of background noise. I apologize. This is example two off of it looks like page 122 in your book. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to work through this one and kind of explain the steps. Your first step is to put it into y equals form. Now, I know this isn't an equal sign. OK, we'll come back to that in a second. Your second is going to be to graph it. And then your third, because it's an, an inequality, we're going to need the shade part of it. So the first step is to put this into y equals form. And if you know how to graph a line, you should be able to do this just fine. So for right now, we're going to pretend the inequality symbol is an equal sign. So I'm going to move my understood plus four over. And I don't really know exactly how you guys have been um, solving for x, but I'm going to put my neg, it's now negative or now minus because the operation changes. And I need it in y equals mx plus b form. Hopefully that sounds familiar, but you write, let me just kind of write this over here. y equals mx plus b. My, my x term needs to be first. So to start solving for y, pretend your inequality symbol is an equal sign. And the only thing that changes when you're solving for x, or in this case y, is if I divide by a negative coefficient, the direction of my inequality switches. So I have to get rid of this um, three here. When I pick it up and move it, well, actually, that's not even the best terminology. Let me rephrase this. I need to get rid of that negative three. I am multiplying it to the y. So to undo that or to get rid of it, I have to divide by negative three. But because we're dealing with an equation, I have to divide every term by negative three. That technically becomes a one. We don't need to write that with this. So I just always tell my kids it kind of goes away. Because I divided by a negative, the direction of my inequality flips. It only flips if I'm dividing by a negative. Now, negative 4 and negative 3 is going to become my coefficient. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, and I want you to leave your fraction as an improper fraction. And you'll see why in just a second. Then 6 divided by negative 3 is minus 2. Now let's go back, hopefully you remember this, to y equals mx plus b. m is our rise over run. b is where it crosses the y axis. You always, always, always want to chart your b first. So in this case, b is negative 2. And my m, or my rise over run, is 4 over 3. Always plot your b first. So let me show you what I mean by that. And I'm sorry my children are screaming in the background. I'm going to just make a quick, very un to scale graph. I'm going to chart my b first. In this case, b is negative 2, and it's crossing the y-axis. Remember, y goes up and down. So negative 1, negative 2. From the b, I am going to rise over run. If it is positive, I rise up. If it is negative, I rise down. So my rise here is 4. From the B, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Rise, 4. Run, 3. 1, 2, 3. You always run right. Okay? Always run right. Now, normally, if I was graphing a line, I would draw a line to connect those dots. But because this is an inequality, because it's not technically equal to, I am going to use a dotted line, not a solid line. If it was less than or equal to, I would use a solid line. But because it's not, if, if it, because it's not equal to, I use a dotted line. And this is telling me that y is less than this line. So I've drawn my line at y equals mx plus b. It's a dotted line because it's not equal to. And this tells me it is less than, which is below it. So I'm going to shade in 
the bottom. And that's what my answer looks like. So your first step, y equals mx plus b. Your m is your rise over run. Your b is where it crosses the y-axis. Always plot your b first. From there, rise and run. Dot your line, or if it's equal to, make a solid line and then shade it in. Okay, let's look at another one. So let's look at your homework. Uh, 122, it looks like you need to do 1 through 10. Let's kind of do a couple of these together. So number one says y is greater than or equal to x. Now this kind of problem is a little wonky because we're supposed to have y equals mx plus b. Well, the first thing that I notice is I have no b. Well, technically I do because what number represents nothing being there? That is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pencil in my plus zero. That is where I'm going to cross the y-axis because there is no b and the value for nothing is zero. The next thing I need is my m, my rise over run. Well, there's no number there, but actually there is There's an understood one. Don't lose your understood ones. And I have to have a rise over run, so I'm going to create that one into a fraction. And remember, any number can become a fraction by putting it over one. So there's my y equals mx plus b. And it looks like most of these already have y equals, which makes it a little easier for you. So there's my first step. I've gotten into y equals mx plus b form. So we're going to graph it. Always graph your b first. In this case, it's 0. So I'm going to put my dot right at that origin. Now I'm going to rise 1, run 1. I'm going to rise up if it's positive. I'm going to rise down if it's negative. I'm always going to run right. So from this point, I'm going to go up one and over one, and that's my second point. Now I need to really pay attention because if it is greater than or less than, it's a dotted line. If it can be equal to, I need to use a solid line. So in this case, y is <clears throat> greater than or equal to, which means that I'm not going to do a very straight line. My line is solid, okay? If it can be equal to, I need a solid line. And because y is greater than, I'm gonna shade the portion above that line. All right, let's do another one. All right, let's look at your homework. Um, <clears throat> look at number one. Number one says y, oh gosh, I, did, I just lost a picture. There we go. Y is greater than or equal to x. So our first step is to put it in y equals mx plus b form. Now there's not an m and there's not a b written, but there are values here. First of all, let's talk about m. There's an understood one there. Don't forget your understood ones. And I need a fraction because I have to rise over run. So I'm gonna put one over one, x. And there's not a b written there. But what is the value that represents nothing? Zero. So now I have my mx plus b. Ooh, that is not a straight line from my graph here. I'm gonna always plot my b first. In this case, b is zero, so it's at that origin. From that point, rise over run. We're gonna rise one. Remember, run up if it's positive, down if it's negative. Run one, and there's my second point. If it is greater than, if it is less than, I need a dotted line. But because this is greater than or equal to, I need a solid line. And this is telling me y is greater than, so everything above it is shaded. So it looks like 2, 3, and 4 on your homework are already solved for y, so just graph those. Um, on those, remember to create a fraction for your rise over run by putting it over one. Five and six, you're gonna need to solve for y. And real quick on number six, when I do this, I'm gonna move my two x over. And because I need it in y equals mx plus b, I'm gonna write my x term first. My understood plus becomes a minus. And now I have my x term first. Now I have to get rid of my negative understood one. Because I have an equation, I'm going to divide everything by negative one. 
When I divide by a negative, the direction flips. Two over negative two over negative one um, becomes a positive, but because I need to rise over run, keep it as a fraction. Four minus one becomes negative four. Um, and then I can graph it. So I have my B here, and I have my rise over run. I'm going to need a solid line, and I'm going to color everything in beneath the line because it's Y is less than. Now on number 8 and 9, when I have X is, let's look at number 9, X is greater than negative 4. When you graph something where you're only given the X, that means 1, 2, 3, 4. You plot a point at X, as, at X negative 4, and your line crosses that. Now this is just greater than, there is no less uh, equal to. So use a dotted line. And this tells me that Y is greater than, so I have to sh uh, sh not shed, <laughs> shade everything on that side of it. 